Now that we've defined rotation, let's look at rotational kinematics. Which, if we had to define, we would just say it's describing uh, the orientation. And before we said with math and with graphs, etc. It's really just the equations that describe something's orientation. Now, when we did linear or translational kinematics, we spent many, many lectures on this. We're now going to kind of go over it in one lecture because it's all really very similar. Okay, so we're going to keep up with the three quantities, position, velocity, acceleration. Now, some of these are just like circular motion, and some of them are not at all like circular motion. So let's go through and be careful about which are and which are not. So let's start with rotational position. This is like translational or linear position x. Here we use theta, just like for circular motion. And you can put it in degrees if you need to, or you can put it in radians, which we would prefer in physics. This is just very similar to circular motion. How far around the circle has it gone? In this case, you could pick a point on this beautiful object here along the horizontal axis and call that zero. And then as you rotate the object, that goes to larger and larger theta relative to the horizontal axis. So this part is very similar to circular motion. Let's look at the rotational velocity. This part is also very similar to um, rotational motion. It's omega in degrees per second or We'd prefer radians per second. In fact, even for a case of rotation, you might see it called angular velocity. Here I wrote rotational velocity just to make it clear. We're trying to talk about um, something different. And then finally, the third one is acceleration. So you might see rotational. I'll go ahead and write angular. I'll put angular slash rotational, either one. Acceleration. Okay, this is written with alpha, it's described with an alpha, and it is in degrees per second squared, or radians per second squared. Okay, this one is not, this is not the same as circular. This is not a centripetal acceleration. Okay, alpha is when your omega is actually changing. Remember, centripetal acceleration was for uniform circular motion. It's going around at a constant speed, therefore omega is constant, and it was this acceleration that describes the motion of a particle going around a circle, this acceleration pointing in. This is describing uh, the change in omega. Alpha describes the change in omega. So if we're gonna write these as kinematics, it all comes out very similar. You could start and say, well, based on sort of the definition um, of omega, you could find that theta is theta naught plus omega t. So if you have something under constant or under uniform omega, this is how its angle changes. And it just comes from the definition of omega being delta theta over delta t. You could also write what happens to omega if you have uh, angular acceleration. Well, omega would be omega naught plus alpha t. And we'll use these, we'll do examples of these as we go. And finally, if you use a little bit of calculus, you can get an expression for theta under uniform angular acceleration. So under uniform alpha, then you can get this expression similar to what you're used to. Theta is theta naught uh, plus omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared. Very similar to x is x naught plus vx naught t plus one half at squared. Very similar expression. So most of the kinematics come out similar between translation and rotation. Just got to keep in mind here we're really talking about uh, uh, the, the rotation of an object, not just talking about the motion of something in a circle.
and it mostly shows up in these two. You might still see it called angular velocity omega, even though they're talking about rotation. This one you'll usually see called angular acceleration, even though they're talking about rotation. 